Hi guys, today I'm here to have a bit of a real talk, chatty chat with you and talk about jealousy in the beauty community and I'm talking the online beauty community, YouTube blogs, Instagram, all that stuff, influencers, normal people. I just want to have a chat. Let's talk about jealousy because it's a thing. It was triggered in me recently and I thought this is an issue. I don't like this. Let's talk about it. Let's get it out in the open. Everyone can stop pretending. Let's talk. I have a bunch of different categories about what I think people, myself included, can tend to be jealous of in the beauty community and let's talk about it. First of all, PR samples, events, PR trips, collabs, the works. We're talking PR and I think PR stands for public relations. Is that right? Public release, pub, something like that. It's to do with your brand interfacing with the public. And PR benefits have been really common. It's not just influencers. So many magazine people, celebrities, people involved in the advertising industry, the beauty industry, beauty editors, all that kind of stuff. Like they've gone on beauty trips for a long time. They've gotten free product for a long time. It's just brands are now more happy to talk to influencers. Influencers are more open about it. It's just... It's a happening. And the thing that triggered this video idea for me is I saw lots of my friends and people who are not my friends that I follow go to the Sephora showcase recently in Australia. And the Sephora showcase has been a bit up and down in terms of PR. Like I've been a couple times, I think, and other times they're like really like strict with their invite list. So it's been a bit funny. I don't even know what's happening this year because I'm a bit out of a loop. But yeah, I was like, Oh wow, it looks really good. And the thing that got me was that goodie bag. I will, if I can find a picture, I'll put one up here. No shade to the blogger or Instagrammer whose pictures this is. It's probably one of my friends who I love. But I was like, dang, I wish I got amongst that. That would be great. And you know, I thought about it. I was like, oh, I'm so jealous of that. Like I would have loved that. I want that stuff for free. But the more I thought about it and I thought about my declutters and I was like, that's just stuff. Nothing in there particularly stood out to me as like, oh, I really want to buy that anyway. The things I saw in the PR packages were just, just stuff. It was just makeup. It was skincare. It was body care. And, you know, I've been trying to declutter my collection, particularly my makeup collection. So I was like, why would I want to add this new stuff to it that I probably won't use? It'll probably go bad or I'll have to give it away before it goes bad anyway. So I won't even get to benefit. I'll just have to give it away to someone. I'll like feel bad for not using it or I feel like I have to use it. And then I'll feel like maybe I should talk nicely about it because I don't want the PR to get mad at me. You know, stuff like that. And I was like, I don't even, why would I even want that? Why am I even jealous? I'm okay with not having gone to that event and gotten that goodie bag. And look, it seems kind of weird and petty to talk about this, but I feel like particularly on Instagram, Instagram stories, people get jealous. People are jealous of who gets PR from this brand, who gets this from that brand. And PR lists, they're quite, I guess, confusing when you're on the other end of them. Like sometimes you'll get PR send outs from this brand, sometimes they'll miss a few PR send outs and you won't get what other people are getting and then yeah. Sometimes you will and then sometimes you get stuff that other people don't get and it's like you don't really understand the logic behind it. I'm sure there's some sort of logic. Yeah, I think there's a lot of jealousy around that, around trips, around events, who gets invited, who is not invited, particularly with pack packages. People are very, very jealous. I think a lot of people are very interested in it, but one of the big lessons you learn is that nothing is free. You get stuff, but often the brand's going to expect you to make something of it, post about it. I do try to go by the policy that if I don't, and if I'm not interested in the product, I'm not going to accept it unless they just send it without asking them. I'm like, well, it's your problem. And even if the brands don't expect you to post something, you've spent like a whole year or whatever doing your blog, doing your YouTube, doing Instagram without getting PR packages, but like all your own stuff to have that reputation and to have, I guess, some followers and stuff behind you. So like all that work that goes into making your content so that the brands consider you worthy to get PR packages, like that is the cost of the PR packages. And you have to remember that. And I'm quite careful not to say yes to everything because, oh, it can go wrong and I have a story to tell but we will tell that in another video because yes it is it is a story to tell okay something else I want to talk about is beauty and like prettiness look this is the beauty community 
it makes sense. But I feel like there can be a bit of jealousy about people being really good looking and people are jealous of that. In Australia in particular, that is what tends to succeed. People who are really good looking, you know, usually blonde, fake tan, skinny, fit, really pretty. I'm not trying to like stereotype, but like that's just, that's just the way it is. People, they just kind of have that very, they just have that look where they're really beautiful. And I think sometimes people can hate them for that. I sometimes have felt jealousy towards people who are really, really good looking in the beauty community and they've succeeded. And sometimes you just, you feel like, I don't want to admit, I don't really want to admit to this, but I'm going to do it so that you guys feel like you can admit it to yourselves. And you feel like you want to bring them down. You want to criticize them. You want to, I don't know, I never do this, but you want to like leave nasty comments being like, oh, well, you're not a nice person because blah, 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 blah. Just because you're like, oh, I'm really jealous of you. And I think that's why sometimes there is a bit of pressure to get lip fillers or to get fake tan or to get your teeth fixed and blah 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 or not not be on camera when you're not like done up and look the internet is a scary place people say crap stuff about you so I mean fair enough but I think jealousy of beauty is a thing and I'm just using my words we're just having a little chat something else that really gets me and I do want to work on not being jealous of this because, you know, I'm a Christian. Jealousy isn't a trait Christians want because, like, it's just taking my eyes off God and it's not a good thing. But we're talking fake people, people with fake follow followers who get really good opportunities. There are so many people who have fake followers. And even if it's not their whole thing, like that bit that pushes them a bit over, like pushes them over the 10K on Instagram or pushes them over the 20K on Instagram. Like those kind of numbers that matter to PR. I find 10K on Instagram used to really matter to PR people. I don't have over 10,000 Instagram followers, but that used to be a thing they were, like they would tell you like, oh, we don't, we don't really send, send products to people with less than 10,000 followers. And um, anyway, so buying followers, that's a thing. Easy to do, I don't participate in it, but I do find it quite frustrating when people with quite obvious fake followers get opportunities for particularly paid Instagram posts. I find it hard because look, it's not fair and the world's not fair, but I don't know. Chloe Morello made that good video about it being fraud. I don't know about the legalities behind it, but I don't think it's a good idea to buy followers if you are looking into it. I think more and more in Australia, law will come out about, you know, selling your influence if you've like, if you're faking it, like that's, that's not telling tr the truth, girl. But in the end, like having a massive amount of followers isn't my goal. I enjoy creating content, interacting with you guys, and I want to be happy with that. I want to be happy with where I'm at. Uh, another thing that people tend to be jealous of, myself included, is big YouTubers who get to do YouTube or Instagram or blogging full time. And I feel like, like this is a really rare thing. It's a very hard thing. People I know like um, the beauty news girls who do it full time, they work so, so hard and they've been working so hard for years now to get to that point. I know a fair few people on YouTube who do it full time and they struggle with social anxiety and stuff like that because they're working from home so much and it can be a bit isolating. But I think like it's always like the end goal is like, I want to do this full time, YouTube full time. That'd be so fun, so great work for yourself, so easy, whatevs. I think in reality it's not and I think it is very difficult to actually become a, you know, a full-time YouTuber. I think you have to be lucky. I think there is lots of skill behind it as well, but like YouTube, YouTube is, it's a, mm, they like to mess with you, but um, I would like to work on not being jealous of that lifestyle because I don't think it's what I ideally think of it as. You know, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. And I think it really is the case with that. Something else is, which I'm not jealous of um, at the moment because I'm trying to declutter my life, but large makeup collections and like having a beauty room where it's full of beautifully displayed makeup and you have your beautiful filming setup and just having like very expensive <laughs> makeup storage because makeup storage is expensive. Like if you buy the nice stuff that is custom made for makeup, it's expensive. Especially if you have lots of makeup you have to store. And I think there was a time where maybe like three or four years ago, we were all about like, whoa, look at these massive, massive makeup collections. The Shanex O makeup collection, like that is beautiful. And people were like coveting it so much. They, they want it. 
and I think doing my declutters has really helped me realize that I don't need it. It's not gonna make me happy to have a huge makeup collection. It's probably just gonna make me sad and anxious that I'm not using all my makeup because it's too big. But I still think there is a bit of coveting. I think, especially if you're new to makeup and you haven't tried much, you want to try some, but makeup is quite expensive when you're brand new fresh and you have to buy everything and you don't know what to buy. Some stuff is crap, some type of stuff is not. You don't know yet. You're just buying stuff and it's kind of adding up very quickly. It is sometimes hard to see people's huge makeup collections and to be like, well, I mean, good for you, but I'm jealous of that. So if you do struggle with that, I'd encourage you do a declutter or do a project pan and see how much makeup you actually use because that has really opened my eyes to how much makeup I need. And it's not like it's not much. I don't need much makeup, but I like it. So I'm happy with what I have at the moment, but I am still continually decluttering and trying to, you know, enjoy my makeup because it's there for me to enjoy, not to worship, not to idolize, but to enjoy. I think something that uh, I have been jealous of on Instagram is having the latest makeup. Having the money to buy the newest releases, the prettiest products, to post new photos straight away, be like the first person to post on Instagram so you can get all the likes of the new products. I think I have struggled with that, but it's just so unmaintainable. No one person is going to be on every PR list ever and get sent every new product that they want. So maybe like the really, really big YouTubers, big Instagram people, but for most people, even like pretty big people, they're not going to get PR from every brand unless you're like trend mood or something. And it is just so expensive to waste your money on new makeup because industry is constantly vomiting it out at you. It's like they're throwing stuff at a wall and seeing what will stick. I find brands just tend to keep releasing, releasing, releasing until they kind of find what sticks and they're like, okay, we'll keep doing that. I've realized that makeup is just makeup. It is so rare, so rare to find something that is revolutionary and it just, it just doesn't happen. It's like the same, same. It's just makeup. That's all it is. So this is my chat, just being honest about some of the stuff I've struggled with in terms of jealousy and I think it's a really big thing in the online beauty community and I don't think it is a good thing. I don't think it's positive for your self-esteem, I don't think it's positive for you as a person. For me it's not positive for my faith and I think it really goes along with pushing consumerism. The idea that you have to have what the other person has, that will make you happy. Look, it's not going to. Brands, they want you to think that. They want you to think you need lipstick in every colour from their thing. You need every new thing that comes out and it's not true. You don't need to look like everyone else. You don't need to have everything, all the new makeup that people have. And I just really wanted to get this off my chest and to be really honest and say like it's okay if you struggle with this but I'm on a journey to work to be less jealous and less stuck in like the consumerism vortex tunnel thing that just keeps rolling on so let me know what you think of this video if you relate at all leave it in the comments and I'll see you guys in my next video bye